Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the fire team. In my last video, I installed a bunch of sets of wheels and tires on the truck. At the time that I made that video, I did not have the RC four wheel drive wheels and tires in. So that's why they were not in that video. What I'm going to be doing today is this. I'm going to be installing these wheels and tires. I'm going to be showing you what you need to know to install those wheels. These wheels will not install on a fire team right out of the box. They will go on other vehicles. They will go on the Creighton 6S. No problem. Right there is a really big hint. Most of you guys just picked up on what I'm going at with that. But we're going to get those installed. But what I want to do first is start this video with kind of a quick Q&A as well as just, hey, giving you some specs of this truck really, really quickly. So if you're interested in this truck and you've kind of clicked on unboxings, heck, you could have clicked on my unboxing and went, oh man, this is going on too long. And you just want to know what the fire team is. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it as quick as I possibly can. Now to do that, I removed the cage and I removed the wheels and tires. I did that because I want you guys just to look at the chassis right now. I want you to look at the layout and this platform so that you can kind of start to let your mind sort of wander at the cool things that you can do with this truck. Obviously in this video, I've already mentioned guys that we're going to be installing the RC four wheel drive wheels and tires. And I'm, I'm doing it this way guys, because I want you again to see the possibilities that this truck is going to offer. Now, I mentioned that I'm going to be doing a very quick overview and that is what I'm going to do right now. Think of this truck as a Mojave slash Creighton. I don't know what Horizon is going to think of me saying it that way because you know what they've done? Arma has done a lot more to this truck than just that. And I can say this guys, hopefully I can say this, when Arma was reaching out, one thing they really asked from us was you know, can you video your initial response to this truck? And I've noticed that other people did it a lot better than I did, but they, Arma was really excited about this guys. And I know that, you know, as a company, as a corporation, Hey, yeah, they're out there to sell vehicles, but they were very excited. They really were excited to give us this new, obviously not a platform, but this new look for an Arma. Arma has in the past just been, you know, they've given us the hardcore monster trucks and they've given us the hardcore bashers, which this is. But besides from the Mojave with, you know, the, the two little dudes in it, they've never done anything like this. They've never given us a truck with, you know, a full cage and, you know, the four little dudes inside and kind of going for a slightly more scale look. They've never done that before. So I can tell you guys this, and I'm not just trying to, you know, make them sound good, but they really did want to know what we thought of this truck. They really were excited to get this thing out there. They were excited for the release because they, again, they were doing something different. And I got off track there a little bit, but this is somewhat of a Mojave. You have a Mojave chassis. You have the Mojave steering blocks in rear hubs, but in the middle there, you've got the Creighton arms. So you've got the length, but then you have the width of the Creighton arms. Now, this truck has new bumpers new body posts, you have that rear handbrake. All right, so about that rear handbrake, does it completely change the truck? No. However, I can tell you guys this from driving the truck probably a good five or six times now, I use it a lot. It helps obviously guys with sliding. It helps with, you know, when you're trying to maneuver the truck a certain way. But I also found myself using it when I just wanted to slow down the truck and I didn't want the force of the motor brake yes we can adjust the motor brake we can turn it up we can turn it down i get that guys but it's kind of a neat way that if you were setting up let's say your motor brake more powerful so you were you wanted something more hardcore you were looking to do you know let's say an, an easy front flip so you want that super force of the brake you could turn up your brake but then at the same time have your mechanical brake to kind of just help slow you down overall so when you're out ripping around you have that extra added brake to slow down your truck without having that you know force of the motor brake and again guys i have used it a lot if you watched that last video where i was ripping the truck around and i almost put it into my truck uh, i'm using the e-brake there i think i was kind of using the e-brake and then some of the motor brake to kind of get the truck to stop so that i didn't completely destroy it but it does work and it's definitely guys a cool add-on that's just there it's it's there out of the box hey if you don't want to use it you don't have to All use right. it with the handbrake out of the way this is the part of video where i want to address 
kind of a Q&A, sort of answer some of the questions that I've seen online in my videos and other videos on Facebook, comments that people have made online as well. So first off, my videos get a lot of, hey, just send it. Hey, launch it. Hey, launch it so we can see the durability. No. <laughs> right now, guys, today, as I'm making this video, it is minus 30 Celsius, minus 40 Celsius with wind chill. That is friggin' cold. And we don't get that all the time, guys, too. I should kind of get that out there. We usually get maybe one or two weeks a year when we get that super, super deep cold. And unfortunately, it just happened to be around the time that I've gotten this truck. When you go out in this kind of cold, that plastic becomes so brittle that it's kind of unfair to run the truck. And it's unfair to run it hard because where if you land a little bit off, but maybe normally the arms or whatever component, the bumpers, whatever would survive, in this kind of cold, it's not. It's going to snap like a twig. So for the guys that live in where it's extremely warm, their plastic is actually kind of the opposite. And if somebody knows more than I do, they can make a comment. But I would think that in extreme warm conditions, the plastic probably gives a little bit more, which means it probably is going to be stronger. Right now, running outside in extreme cold is bad, as well as, guys, it's super hard on the batteries as well in that kind of cold. So that's why I haven't done a ton of running. I don't get out and do, you know, battery pack after battery pack because it's just not good for anything as well as even guys the oils the oils will thicken up so your shocks will thicken up so it's it kind of has a really it has a very bad effect you basically end up with the shock oil for example thickening up and feeling thicker but you also then have a truck that might be caked with snow so yeah you guys i think at this point now get the point we're going to move on to the wheels and tires they have come up a lot and i've seen those guys in a lot of comments Wheels and tires work. Are they my style of wheel and tire? No. I prefer a more aggressive tread, something more like a Badland, uh, an MX-38 Badlands, motocross style tread. That is my preferred look, as well as just the way the tire performs. I, again, guys, I prefer a more aggressive tire. I was surprised at these tires. They did work fairly well in the snow for not really having much, for not having a very deep tread. So, you know what? If you get this truck, yeah, you might want to change the wheels and tires, but I do know what Arma was going for. I know between the caged body, the side-by-side -side razor, whatever you want to call it, type style body with those wheels and tires. So I kind of get what they were going for. So it is cool that they have, you know, they did give us something new. They didn't just throw one of their other wheels and tires on. So again, tires, yeah, might not be your cup of tea, but they do work. Next, price. Um, you know, this is, is a funny one because I get that the truck is expensive. Here in Canada, it's 950 bucks at Eliminator RC. And that's actually, guys, one of the better prices I've seen so far. So if you're interested in the truck and you're in Canada, hey, click on the link in the description. It'll bring you to Eliminator's website and you can check it out. All right. One thing I keep seeing on Facebook that I want to address right now is the people who comment that, you know, this truck is using the same parts, that they didn't make anything new. Oh, they threw a different body and some tires on it. And... I have always wondered when those people say that if they're really just looking to complain or if they actually really mean that. Because for me, if a company takes a proven platform, so they've got a proven drive line, arms, diffs, everything, and they give you a completely new body. In the case of the fire team, you've got the cage and the panels, and they give you a new set of wheels and tires, bumpers, all that kind of stuff. But they use the proven parts of their other trucks. I don't understand why that is a bad thing. Take the fire team, for example. I have a Creighton 6S EXB and an Outcast 6S EXB, and all three of these trucks will share the same arms. So if I break an arm on the fire team, for example, I can reach into my drawer and I can grab the spare parts that I have. What makes it even cooler is that instead of just being able to purchase parts, let's say at a hobby store, you can go on eBay, you can check out the chop shops where they'll have a front lower, a front upper and a rear arm mixed with maybe turnbuckles and, and other parts that you can buy for usually a pretty good price 
And even if all those parts that were in that package weren't for, let's say, the fire team, you might be able to use them on one of your other trucks. I need to buy a front turnbuckle for my Creighton 6S EXB. And when I go on eBay, I can get those as well as all the arms and I forget what else for kind of a, you know, a pretty good combined price. And that way I get to fix my Creighton. But now I also have spare arms for three other trucks. I think that, guys, is really, really cool. So, again, I don't know why people complain about a company using an already proven platform. To me, that's just a win-win-win. It makes the overall running of the truck actually cheaper because now you are not buying tons and tons of parts for tons and tons of vehicles. You're actually able to buy arms that will fit on multiple vehicles. Next, we're going to talk about the electronics. And before I get to that, if you guys watched the last video, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned my daughter. I mentioned tap. That's going on right now. So if you hear a bunch of noise in the background, that is my daughter doing tap. Firma 150 amp ESC 2050 kV motor heatsink and fan come with the truck. I would have liked to have seen Arma go back to their roots when they used to install the Max 8 in their truck. I've had a lot of people comment that I don't know what I'm talking about. They tell me that this is a Max 8. This is not. And what for those guys that don't know, here's what you're going to do. Go on Arma's website, search BLX200, and then search in another window BLX185. They are two different ESCs. When the Big Rock was released, the Phazon was released, and the Nero was released, they came with the BLX200, and that is the Max 8 equivalent. This ESC works. When you turn up your punch a little bit, it does really help. I had mentioned, guys, in my Outcast 6S EXP video where as soon as I up the punch, it dramatically changed the truck. And I think for what Arm is going for with this truck, that ESC, that motor is going to be perfectly fine. There's going to be the usual guys that have to upgrade the ESC motor right out of the box. Hey, that's what they do. That's what they're known for. Personally, for what this truck is and how I'm going to be driving it, this stuff is going to work just fine. The last thing I want to cover, guys, is the diffs. The diffs are the conventional diffs. So you do have a metal cup here, which is really, really nice in the center. But these are your standard diffs that are in everything but the EXPs. And I think the reason they did that, and it makes a lot of sense, is having this rear handbrake, you... And I mean, if somebody can do this better job of this, hey, please leave it in the comments. But because you're going to be locking up the rear, if you had a really thick diff or your center diff was locking up, that wouldn't work right because you would end up having basically everything locking up. So in that unboxing video, I had shown how when you hit the brake and you lock the brake, you can still spin the front tires. If you had a locked center differential, that is not going to happen. And again, the way that limiting slip works... As far as, as I have felt from driving the trucks and from what I know, as soon as you kind of start to apply a lot of power, that's when the plates do what they do and you end up with a lock center diff. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, we can get to the fun part of the video. We're going to install the RC four-wheel drive wheels and tires. These are the 3.8-inch Dixie Peck beadlock wheels and the 3.8-inch mudslingers. These are a wicked-looking wheel and tire combo. If you're familiar to these in the one-to-one -one world, they pretty much are the exact same as the Super Swamper Boggers, which is a really famous, very well-known mud-bogging tire, as well as they work really, really good in the snow. Growing up, I had a few buddies that had them, and I always really, really liked them. So, obviously, to be able to put them on an RC, well, that's just even cooler. But there are a few things that you guys should know right off the bat, and I'm putting a lot of emphasis in my voice because I feel like it's really, really important. Those wheel and tires weigh almost twice as much as the stock fire team wheels and tires do and they weigh over twice as much as the stock Creighton 6s wheels and tires do so again you can tell I got a lot of emphasis in my voice there the reason is if you buy these wheels and tires and you are expecting to put them on whatever the fire team the Creighton etc and then drive the truck the same way you would on the stock wheels and tires that is not going to happen now, what you're probably thinking right now is, why is this idiot installing those heavy wheels and tires on the truck? And here it goes. For a long time, I have wanted to build a truck around those tires. I have owned Traxxas Summits. I have owned a fairly nicely built Yeti XL. 
and those tires destroyed both of those trucks. The Summit guys even had, and I can't remember the company now, but a ton of the upgrade parts for those diffs that should have made it be able to handle these wheels and tires, and it didn't. So I have always been looking to use these tires on a build. I'm always trying to find something that I think will look cool with those wheels and tires. And they just, I've had them at times, I've kind of installed them on a crate and to see how they were gonna look. And they just don't work with that truck. That shorter wheelbase, you know, the, the style of body, it's just not something that really fits. So when I did this unboxing, when I, and you guys gotta remember, this was a surprise for me. I did not know what was in the box. And I saw the cage and I got the truck on the bench and I, I took the cage off and I saw the longer wheelbase and those wider arms. I immediately started thinking about these, like instantly. I actually had kind of lost what the fire team actually was with the stock wheels and tires and immediately started thinking of the build that I could do. And I knew right from then, guys, that I was going to be buying these wheels and tires again, which obviously I did. Something I'm going to mention is that the stock servo has been good with the stock wheels and tires. It was even good when I was running the MX-38. However, since I just told you that these weigh twice as much as those wheels and tires do, I have decided to upgrade the steering servo. So I'm going to be installing an OMG 55 kilogram servo. This thing should be somewhere around like I think 700 ounces of torque. So it should be an absolute beast. I won't be installing it in this video only because I'm gonna, I wanna be able to show you guys these wheels and tires with a stock servo and then show you guys the difference with the upgraded servo. I also have this kicking around. I've had it now for a while. It's from Kim. It's from the Basher Queen. Uh, this is a taller servo mount. So being that this is obviously, guys, you guys can see right now, a fairly tall servo, that should allow me to install that servo in the truck. But let's... All right, so I've got the wheels and tires on the truck and this looks wicked. But unfortunately, I got to share a little bit of bad news. This isn't the bad news. The rim does clear the front steering blocks. I've kind of spun this a few times. I've, I've you know, tried to put force down on it and all that stuff. And it does clear. It is very close, but it does clear. Unfortunately, though, in the rear, it does not clear. Right here, guys, right where the, the rod end is, this will rub. And you can actually see where it has, when I was kind of, you know, sort of putting a little bit of pressure on it and stuff like that, you can see where these rubs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you why they rub, but I'm also gonna show you the fix for them. All right, so I've got both wheels in front of me. So I've got obviously the stock wheels and then the RC4 wheel drive beadlock wheels. And on these wheels, guys, the beadlock, the ring itself, there's kind of a lip right here. You can see it right there. And the problem is, is that lip is what hits the top of the rod end. So on something like the stock wheel and tire, you can see you're good, whatever, three and five eighths, something like that. But over here, between that beadlock rim, you're only about three inches. So the problem is it just doesn't have the diameter to clear that. But like I mentioned, there is a fix. Here is the same wheel and tire installed in the Creighton. And obviously being that this is a Creighton, it has the Creighton hubs. And you can see that that clears no problem whatsoever. I know it's a little dark. I'm trying to do my best job here. But it does clear, guys. There's no issues at all. All right, so my plan is to pick up a set of the Creighton hubs, Creighton steering blocks, wheel hexes, stub axles, all that stuff that I need. I'm just not sure if I'm going to go with stock ones, if I'm going to go with a set of the Vitavon ones. I really like the red. I think that would be cool on this truck as well as there's also the M2C steering blocks and rear hubs. So I'm not sure. I'll decide that in the next little bit. But I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. I wanted you guys to see that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the tires back on so that you guys can have a good right, look. Guys, at the there truck. it is. The Arma Fire Team with the RC four wheel drive mudslingers installed. This looks really good. I am excited to get this truck out and start running it with these wheels and tires. Again, like I've just mentioned earlier, I do got to pick up a few parts so that I can get those rear tires to clear. But I can at least leave them on for now and lug the truck around the house like I always do and stare at it because it just looks really, really good. And what is even cooler, guys, right now is the fact that as good as this looks, I am constantly seeing things I want to do. So I would assume everybody has already thought about a light bar and all that kind of stuff. But picture this right now with rock lights on it. 
picture those four corners lit up. I think that would look super, super cool. And those are things, guys, I'm going to be doing. I don't have any of those parts right now. I don't have any spare light bars or anything like that. So this is all stuff I've got to look into and purchase. But again, I am just very happy with how this looks. All right, that is it. I have rambled on long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found what I had to say interesting. And I hope you guys really like these wheels and tires on the truck because I think they look epic. As always, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe, hit the little notifications bell, and enjoy the pics.